Okay. When I recorded vlog episode 59, I had no idea of the trouble that that episode would stir up. Hi. Hi. Okay, okay, so, so today, today, I want, I want to, talk to talk about, about this. this. First up, it was never my intent to do anything more than basically point out the same information that I learned growing up in the UK, just like anybody else growing up in the UK that time would already know, but which many of my vlog viewers outside of the UK didn't go through. So because they didn't grow up in the UK, they wouldn't know about this, and it was just supposed to be lightly educational. But it wasn't supposed to be boring, and it definitely was not supposed to be delving too deep into any particular aspect. Now, within a few days, it was very, very obvious from the, uh, you know, the, the comments down below that, uh, I mean, it's the comments that make this a wonderful platform, but as a creator, you get feedback, you know, positive and negative from your viewers. And, you know, this tells you when you've done something great or when you've done something terrible. Now, going back to the idea that I was not supposed to be delving too deep into any particular aspect. There's been a fair bit of attention drawn to why the UK plug has a fuse. So this is a follow-up video to cover this and make sure that the loose ends that everyone so kindly suggested are also followed up. First things first, please note I am not an electrician, I am an IT bloke, I write software for a living, I don't wire up houses. Please take this for what it is, light edutainment. It's not formal instruction on how to wire up your house. If you need to do any electrical work, hire a professional. Do not attempt to do it yourself. Right, with that out of the way, first of all, we're going to go over distribution. So, the first quick thing that we need to cover is, okay, as you can see, low budget. Right, so, imagine we've got a graph and on here we've got so let's say that's 200 kilovolts and up here we've got 500 kilovolts so oops that should be a uppercase v <laughs> see i'm going wrong already this is why you don't listen to a software guy yeah see i've totally messed that up okay all right so 200 300 400 so this will be 300 kv and this will be 400 kv right okay in the US, they're about 230 kilovolts. So let's say here is US up to 500 kilovolts. So the US is somewhere between here and here when it comes to distribution, right? With me so far. Okay, uh, yeah, so that was the US, so US. Now we'll do 275, so 275. So from here to, uh, what was it now? It's 400, isn't it? Yeah, so 400. So this is where the UK sits. So that's the first difference between the two systems outside of the obvious one with the plug, right? Uh, when the electricity gets to the house though, this is where things really, really change. So, so in the UK, we have what's called a ring circuit or a ring final circuit. And uh, you know, this is analogous to basically you've got a ring. Everywhere else in the world uses what's called a radial circuit where things come out this way, All right? So how does this ring circuit work? Because this is the clue as to why we have a fuse in the plugs and nobody else does. So what you've got is a box that comes in the consumer unit. And this is normally rated for 32 amps. That really looks bad, doesn't it? Let's try that again. Okay, so we have, let's draw this 32 amps. And this is the consumer unit. Right, there we go, now it fits in the box. So we have the consumer unit. This is where your power's coming in. What you have is this ring of circuits that then goes around. And basically imagine a you know piece of wire with three individual strands inside it it goes out of here and it comes into here goes into here goes into here into here and then it goes back again actually technically it goes back like that the idea of this is that you've got 26 amp wire so in the uk when you plug a plug into the wall that plug normally has a fuse that is either 3 amp or 13 amp generally so what you'll notice with that 13 is that two 13s, so 13 times two, equals this 26 amps over here. Now, if I plug in two 13 amp uh, appliances on this ring, in theory, I've totally 
uh, maxed out what this ring can handle. So why would they have 26 amp wire when there's a 32 amp consumer unit? Well, because it's a ring, the power can go around both ways. So, you know, the load is shared. It goes that way and that way. That's a really bad arrow, isn't it? So it goes both ways. Yeah, I've just made the arrow worse. So yeah, let's just quickly recap this so far. The UK home ring circuit usually has a circuit breaker rated at 32 amps at the consumer unit. On older houses, especially uh, you know ones built a long time ago, what you'll see there is uh, 30 amp breakers and even earlier than that, you'll see 30 amp fuses. The idea of the 32 amp, if I'm uh, uh, remembering this correctly, is because of EU regulations. So the sockets are daisy chained in the ring uh, using relatively thinner wire than is used everywhere else. And this is the, the key to things. Now, the reason for the thinner wire, I'm not gonna get into, but just know that you know the idea was it was supposed to save wire uh, you know, during the great rebuild after the war, uh, you know, this was supposed to be more efficient than what was used before. It doesn't take too much though to point out that if I was to say, for instance, chop this out, well, now it's a radial circuit. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's a bit silly. So anyway, getting back to it. So the sock is a daisy chained inner ring and the wire is good for 26 amps, which, you know, won't be fried because the power can go around both ways. Now, obviously if the circuit did break, you wouldn't actually know about it until you overload it somehow. Uh, you know, th this is one of the problems with this, but we're, we're not gonna get into that right now. And as I just mentioned, the fuses are rated normally at three amp for light uh, appliances, you know, lamps and things like that, up to 13 amps, which is what your kettle and your hair dryer and stuff would be. So let's just imagine quickly that you wanted to extend this ring circuit. You know, you build an extension to your house or you suddenly decide you need an extra socket where there wasn't one previously. This is where something called a spur comes in. And basically you just go sort of, you know, off there, stick another socket on there. And because there is no ring at this point, you can have a maximum of two, so one, two. You can have a maximum of two sockets on the end of this. And it's normally one double socket or one single socket and that's because this is 26 amps right so why the fuse so let's say that this 26 amp rated wire sitting behind a 32 amp consumer unit is feeding a small appliance with a flimsy little 3 amp cable so let's imagine that appliance malfunctions and it shorts somehow rather than draw just the required ampage it's now sucking everything it can get what you're going to find is that little appliance you know, let's imagine we've got a little lamp here. Yeah, this is a really bad picture of a lamp, but let's just imagine we've got a lamp here and it's on a free amp fuse. So, so something goes horribly wrong and it starts drawing lots and lots of current. What's gonna happen is this thin wire here is suddenly going to catch fire. So let's put some red. So now, we, now we've got a fiery wire. That fire can easily be stopped if there is a free amp fuse here and that is why we have the fuse now let's just quickly compare that to say in the US where you have your consumer unit in the middle and it's feeding out these 15 amp so it's feeding out 15 amp radial circuits if you've got let's say on this spur we've got two sockets and you've got your lamp plugged into here yeah still a bad picture of a lamp now if something malfunctions here it's just going to trip this entire radial part because this is on a breaker and you know it will trip just that part but it's not going to affect everywhere else if we go back to this one here you know with this on fire we can cut this off and it doesn't trip everything else as well if we were to trip something at the uh, you know the consumer unit, it would take out the entire ring, and you probably don't want that. You know you don't need your entire uh, floor losing power just because one lamp malfunctioned. So this only applies to sockets that are on the walls. Uh, it does not apply to things like electric cookers and ovens because guess what? They're actually supplied on a radial circuit, <laughs> and it's a uh, free phase circuit. So it's, it's a totally different circuit, totally different, uh, you know, uh, specification. And it actually happens to be a radial that comes out, and that's your, you know, what was it? It's, uh, is it a 32 amp? Actually, I can't, I can't remember. There's a certain ampage, but just know there's a certain ampage there. Put a question mark, and yeah, you know, that's how your oven goes out. It's on a free phase circuit. 
and it's radial. So that's why we have the fuse. Uh, it's not a complicated thing to understand why we have the fuse, but it's not entirely obvious when you don't know what the differences are between the two circuit types. So yeah, here's a question for you, uh, you know, something I've noticed, um, and I'd love it if an American or Canadian can explain this one to me. I've noticed many appliances uh, being limited at 12 amps when sockets are supposed to be 15 amps. And I've no idea why this number 12 exists, but it seems to be a selling feature on many appliances like vacuum cleaners. Um, if you can answer that question, feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, everybody else, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. If you want to leave comments, which I'm sure some of you will, please do so below and uh, consider subscribing. And thanks for watching. Okay, thanks, bye.